everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to this week's In Focus Friday where we have a close look at something cool made of silver or gold. So I've got the 10 ounce version of the Royal Celebration Bar. Really cool piece, an incredible product in the 10 ounce. Let me tell you, it is well worth getting if it's something that you like the design of. I bought this one directly from Chards Coin and Bullion. They are not sponsoring today's video, but they're a great dealer and I really do like them a lot. So beautiful bar. We'll have a little bit of a look at that as we go throughout. But also I want to share an update on the one ounce version that I bought directly from the Raw Mint. This is actually from Chards as well. But the one that I got originally from the Raw Mint was in awful condition with damage all over the assay card, big chunk of black fluff inside the actual uh, blister pack itself and the quality of the Charles Royal cipher at the back was just awful. I sent it back so I'm going to share some of the trials and tribulations that I went through but we did get a successful refund. Yes, refund from the Raw Mint on a bullion product. We broke their system, broke their policies, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment in maybe the second part of the video. Let's talk about the 10 ounce version first. So this is a very tasty piece indeed. I think the mintage on this was 6,000. I could be misremembering that, but um, I correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone will in the comment section down below. But compared with the one ounce version, this is a real treat to see. The one ounce version is nice, but oh my goodness, it translates incredibly well up the scale to this 10 ounce. It's just a shame that there isn't some form of like blister pack um, alternative for it. We've got this OMP, as I call it, the original mint packaging from the raw mint in this plastic um, container. I'm not going to open this right now. I want to see if I can find a, a square capsule that would fit this at some point. And at that point, I will break it out of this plastic and put it in there. But it's a real chunky monkey and it shows what the raw mint can do well. And when they do it well, they get it so, so right. Now, I haven't seen any kind of major quality issues on this particular product with regards milk spotting and the like. I don't know if other people out there have been experiencing milk spotting on these bits of raw mint silver, but this looks a really, really high quality. It's got a beautiful sort of matte sheen finish with the gloss finish on the high relief elements of the bar. It looks well made, it looks well engineered, it looks well produced, and I have to say it's a real stunner. And the raw mint, I've been quite critical of them of late. They have had some issues, I think, with them, you know, strategy going forwards about what kinds of products they want to make and bring out and sell. This is what we want to see. This is the kind of thing that really does get people like me who will be very, very hesitant to spend money, including VAT on direct mint raw silver or even from a dealer. This is the kind of product that will get me out of bed and get me buying those things. So, you know, good job Royal Mint on the quality of the design. Let's see more of it. Now, as we talk about quality, we'll move into the second part of the video, which is about the return of this product. Now, for those that don't necessarily know, you do not have the statutory right to get a refund on your bullion products from the Royal Mint. You may or may not know that. It's part of the consumer, um, oh, they told me, I got it in a sort of email here. Uh, da, 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 da. It's the consumer contracts regulations where because it's a product that fluctuates due to its price, you cannot get a refund. Now, I broke the system. So I, first of all, when I got that bar, I was a little bit PO'd that it was in such poor condition. And when I filmed my video about it in there, I was like, I can't really be bothered with all of the energy and effort that's required to go and get a you know replacement. So I'll just keep it, bad luck. And a lot of you said, no, that's not the right attitude. You know, we've got to try and push back on the raw mint. So that's what I did. So I contacted them because if you go on their website and you say, you know, go into the returns section, it says we do not offer returns as standard for bullion products. But if you believe that it's inferior quality, then get in touch with the raw mint and you can arrange a return for a replacement at very least. So that's what I did. I got in touch with the raw mint and shared some of the... Uh, the conversation I had with the call cool handler, but basically it was, we don't do returns on bullion. I was like, yeah, but your website says you do. We don't do returns on bullion. He's like, well, we're going around in circles here and banging my head against a brick wall. Uh, eventually, um, wasn't getting anywhere. I got a bit frustrated with them. And so I just said, right, it's fine. I'll just reach out to my account manager as I'm fortunate to have an account manager with them. And eventually I got a returns label paid for. And that's important because I really, I, I, consumer contracts regulations aside, and uh, making sure that um, you know you can't get a refund, fine, okay. But at the very least, if the Raw Mint send out a really awful product that's just 
piss poor quality, that's no fault of the customer. If the customer has paid for a product and they don't get something that's actually in pretty good condition, then in my opinion, they should be able to return it to the raw mint free of charge and the raw mint should then send out a replacement free of charge. That's surely in sort of trading standards terms and I don't know what the distance selling regulations have to say about those kind of things exactly. I'm not a contracts lawyer at all and how it relates to this distance selling for you know bullion products. But I think from a moral perspective, as a consumer perspective, surely the raw mint has a duty of care to make sure that you get actually a product that is in decent quality. So anyway, I bought tooth and nail, I got a returns label for free from the raw mint and I sent my bar off. And actually, within a couple of weeks, it's not been too long, I got a reply from the raw mint. So after a couple of weeks, I had this email from the Royal Mint and they said, I hope this email finds you well. I'm contacting you regarding your order. Please, can you confirm if you would like a replacement as we are unable to refund billion orders? Well, I'm not surprised. I would be also surprised if they had a billion orders to refund, but get the spelling right, guys, come on. If you have any further uh, assistance, if you require any further assistance, please don't hesitate to contact myself or the customer services team. So I did because I wanted a refund. I just thought it was uh, pretty, quite honestly, piss poor. And I was now not particularly happy with that particular thing. So I just replied very quick saying, I prefer to have a refund, thank you, as I do not think this is for me anymore. And I got a reply saying, uh, we do not typically accept bullion products to be returned for a refund or exchange. Well, that's factually incorrect because I literally have just done it and it's on your website, Roman. It says if you've ordered something bullion and you think the, right, the quality is inferior, then you can get in touch to send it back. And I am a firm believer that we have the right as consumers to send that back free of charge. And it took me bloody ages to get that returns label. But you know, they're hiding behind this here, which is what I was saying earlier. Therefore, there is no statutory right to return or cancel a bullion order once placed under the consumer contracts regulations. And that's because prices are determined by the live precious metal spot prices, which are dependent on fluctuations in financial markets. In my opinion, that is just a get out of jail free clause for the Royal Mint. And it's not just the Royal Mint, other dealers as well will hide behind it. Dealers you can kind of understand because they're not the ones producing these products. But for my opinion, it's really, really poor to just hide behind that. So I went back to the Royal Mint and I had this to say. So said, I understand this and I understand there is no statutory right to refund it. I'm asking for some dispensation from you and the Royal Mint regarding this product. If you will not offer a refund, I will have to accept a replacement, but it will be the last time I ever place a bullion product order directly from the Royal Mint. It is very disappointing as a customer to have to go through such hardship to have even gotten the offer of a replacement and returns label sent to me. If the Royal Mint cannot produce a product that is satisfactory in quality, then they should not hide behind the consumer contracts regulations. There is no excuse for sending out inferior products and then not allowing customers to send back the product for a replacement free of charge. I had to reach out to my account manager to get the returns label on this Otherwise, I would have been out of pocket on the return too. There is not much customer service happening here. It is just It just seems like a blunt use of policy to avoid having to actually provide a decent resolution to a supposedly high value customer. And I'm playing that do you know who I am card. I hate doing it, but I am. It's just really sad. And I said, look, I'd be happy, more than happy for you to refer this case up to Anne Jessup or for any of the other appropriate executive members of the Royal Mint to discuss why such poor customer services exist for this kind of situation. And look, I, I hate playing on this like, you know, this valued customer crap. It, it's not who I am. I don't enjoy it. And But I'm doing it to prove a point because we did quite promptly after that email, I would add a few minutes later, I think they probably just did it to get rid of me, quite frankly. We have this reply. So um, thank you for your reply. Uh, oh, hang on now. That's the, that's the first email that I sent. Here we go. This is the successful one. There it is. Thank you for your reply. I've now spoken to my manager and we have been having an issue with the quality of the product you have returned. My manager has given me authorization for a refund. Apologies for the inconveniences caused. Um, so, can you smell that? It smells like victory. So yeah, we kind of broke the Royal Mint's policy on refunds for bullion. Um, does that set a dangerous precedent for the Royal Mint? Should you all now rush out and send stuff back that is poor quality? Well. My thoughts here are, there are a lot of issues around quality control from the Royal Mint when it comes to bullion products and milk spotting and just honestly, quite honestly, piss poor quality. I think, certainly, it is worth pushing back on the Royal Mint when we get these things. If you get a 
brand new tube directly from the Royal Mint. So this is the thing, if you buy it from a dealer, I think that the time has passed really to be able to do that. But if you order something directly from the Royal Mint and you get it and it's crap, you need to push back on the Royal Mint. We need to be going back to them and saying, give me a returns label, send me out coins which are not full of milk. Because if we don't do that, then they don't understand that there is a problem. They will be in blissful ignorance of the fact that there are these crap coins and bars and things flying out there in this world. And if we hit them hard with all of these returns labels, remember they have to pay for the return out back to them and then the postage back out to you as well. You as a customer should not be penalized for something that is not your fault. And if something goes back and they say, this is acceptable quality and they send it back out to you and it's got full of milk spots and everything, then that is in my opinion an admission of their just absolute, complete lack of quality control. So yeah, lots of things to unpack here in this video and I do think it's interesting. Now, my conclusion here is that I, I genuinely think there's two things that have happened here that have allowed me as my own self to get this situation done. First, I am a high value customer from the Royal Mint. So I have an account manager. I've been spending money with the Royal Mint for a while. I've spent probably more money than I would care to admit at the Royal Mint. Not all of it has been on bullion, but most of it has been on proofs, you know. The point of the matter here is I think that that has played a big role into why I managed to get a simple £30, £35 refund. The second thing is I think they have an element of knowing that there's YouTube videos out there that might follow about this. So there is positives to be said. They have issued a refund. They did give me a free returns label, but the negatives were that I definitely got the impression that Joe Bloggs' random public member would not be able to do this. Um, certainly when I rang up the customer services team, they just were like, but we don't offer returns on bullion. Yeah, but you do. So give me a returns label. This is, we can't offer returns labels. Well, so who can then, you know, because this is not acceptable and it should not be right for a customer to have, um, you know, something inferior sent to them, even if it's a bullion product that fluctuates in price. So yes, there we go. That's my uh, experiences with the Royal Mint and returning and getting a refund for once. Let me know your thoughts down in that comment section about this whole subject. I think it's interesting. Do you think I'm on the right track? Do you think I'm um, a little bit, uh, just I really hate playing on that. Do you know who I am? Um, but it has to sometimes be done, unfortunately. So anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you one and all. We'll see you for Sunday's live stream. So 7-ish, seven, 7.30, seven I don't know. We'll see when I get sat down in front of the pouring bench. Uh, I will go live and we will do some silver pouring and here's a little sneak preview of some of the pieces that we will have up for sale on that particular live stream that will go live that day and it should be a right old barrel of laughs for sure. So join me then, otherwise thank you all for watching, we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.